This is me on the left, about two years and 65 pounds ago. I was on a morning show demonstrating some of the choreography from a play I was involved in, and one of the things I did caused the host to make this expression. As choreographers, this is the face we want to see audience members make. So what did I do? First, the play I was working on was called Goodnight Desdemona, Good Morning Juliet. A modern-day assistant professor finds herself stranded in the worlds of Shakespeare's Othello and later Romeo and Juliet. Part of the script says Othello binds and threatens Iago, but it doesn't exactly make sense for Othello to pull out modern-day handcuffs, so I suggested to the director that we use part of Othello's costume, a sash that he wears in the production. So for the morning show, I made sure to wear this untied tie around my neck from the moment I entered the building. If I bumped into the host in the hallway, which happened twice, I wanted him to think it was just part of my style, part of my outfit for the day. You can see the host thought it was neat that the tie became cuffs but he was astonished when it turned out that they were actually functional and could tighten around his wrists. It wasn't a fake prop of a couple of loops and an actor pretending to be stuck. I turned my tie into the real deal right before his eyes, and you can see his face light up with wonder. I don't know about you, but I love this type of choreography where Jackie Chan takes part of a costume or the set and ties people up. There's something magical about it, isn't there? So let's look at the knot that I used, how it's done so quickly, and the details beyond the knot itself that make the whole thing work. Here are the actors putting their reps in with a boxing hand wrap in the rehearsal space. Since this was a stage show, there were no second takes, which meant the actors had to be able to get it right 100% of the time. This sort of choreography has to be smooth and fast, otherwise it feels like it grinds the show to a halt. Let's compare this method to another production I found online that also used part of Othello's costume to bind Iago. Ready, go. And done. We're all done, guys. Gotta move on with the scene now. Guys? There we go. For choreography, we can't use time-consuming knots like these. We need quick knots with unconventional props if we want to light up someone's face like this. The victim is a big part of this type of choreography too. Look at all the minute details in the victim's hands alone. First, he holds his hands loose and relaxed, but inconspicuously tucks his thumbs as the cuffs go onto his hand, mitigating any possibility of the material snagging. When the cuffs are cinched up, we want as big a transformation as possible. Going from loose and relaxed to tight and compact like this doesn't happen naturally. Without choreographing the cinching up part, the move ends up looking kind of like this with very little visual change. So instead of fists staying side by side, let's have them cross over a little at the wrist. Looks better, but not great. What if we go open hands, side by side, away from the body, to clenched fists crossed at the wrist close to the body? Now we've got an impressive transformation that really shows Iago has lost his freedom. I've found firefighting knots to be the best resource since they're often designed to be created quickly and applied in rescue situations that involve tying knots around people. Now that you've got a good foundation, let's dissect three Jackie Chan examples. Now this is film, so a lot of the important parts are going to be what happens just before and just after the cut. Jackie grabs the back of the blazer. The victim turns to face him, causing the tails of the coat to be crossed. But after the cut, you can see that they are not crossed over. Jackie has switched his grip, and now it's far apart and the tails aren't crossed. At this point, if one of them spins, the tails will be crossed again. But they both spin, so the tails should not be crossed. Jackie has switched his grip again during the cut. Now the tails are crossed again. This next hand movement doesn't accomplish anything either. It just looks like he's tying a knot. And since it happens just outside the frame of the camera, it kind of tricks us into thinking something's been done, even though it hasn't. Next, he pulls his hands apart, and it feels like a knot's been pulled tight, but really in a freeze frame, we can see that it's just crisscrossed and he's just kind of moved his hands back and forth. It's still good, it's still effective, but there have been a lot of grip changes between shots, and really, there's been a lot of cheating to achieve this in this particular fight. One reason I don't like this method that has cheats from one shot to the next is that it's hard to convince a director by saying, then we cheat and hope no one notices. It's much easier to convince a director that something's a good idea when you can show a real knot accomplishing a real real goal right in front of them. This fight from the Karate Kid reboot uses a different choreography trick. I want you to pay attention to the length of the jacket sleeves from the white stripes to the cuffs. Yes, the jacket does slide up the kid's back to provide more slack, but even then, those sleeves aren't long enough for what ends up happening. 
What happens is between shots, they switch out the jacket for a different prop jacket that has longer sleeves. Even though this is cheating, it allows Jackie and the other performers to stand a little farther apart and open up so that we can see and appreciate the choreography more. In this fight, I think it goes a little too far with the enhanced jacket sleeves, but I do think that this is a worthwhile trick in some cases to make sure the audience can see and appreciate the choreography. This rope factory fight from Miracles has one standard cheat and then a much cooler method. Let's get the standard cheat out of the way. This guy at the bottom of the screen grabs a rope and whirls it around Jackie's leg. He grabs the other end and all he does is cross it over. He never actually ties a knot. Between shots, they tied a real knot around Jackie's ankle. Then they had the actor put his hand on the knot to make it look like he achieved that. This is a common cheat and there's nothing wrong with it, but it takes more time and money to do separate shots. And obviously before pulling Jackie and suspending him, yeah, of course they're gonna make a real knot. Personally, I say why settle for using multiple camera angles to achieve a cheat when you can save time and money by using a real knot in one continuous shot. Now to the coolest example. No cheats, but also no actual knots. Just helpful stuntmen. The stuntman comes in and puts one foot on either side of the rope. Jackie wraps the rope around him so that now the right leg of the stuntman is wrapped up. Second stuntman comes in and he puts one foot on either side. Jackie wraps the rope around him in the exact same way. Both stuntmen now have their right leg wrapped around one time with the rope. Their left legs are completely free, so they grab the rope and pretend that their left leg is tied. For the stuntman on the right, they've also pulled the rope taut from above so that everything looks tighter. Jackie going over top of the stuntmen with the rope like this doesn't actually do much of anything, but they pretend it does and fall on top of each other. They're very helpful. Nonetheless, this is amazingly creative and I love this fight. If you're serious about doing this kind of choreography, I recommend an app called Useful Knots. It's free, there are loads of knots, and they're all categorized, and everything's really clear. Get a little piece of rope from the dollar store, and get practicing, and get fast. It's also worthwhile to learn different ways to achieve the same knots. I can do cuffs this way, but what if the director likes the idea, but not the feel of the way it's being tied? Well, I can show them this way, or another, or another. What if I do the same method, but pull one end all the way through? Now I've got a noose. Director thinks that method takes too long? I can show them this one, it's faster. It can go around a neck, a limb, two limbs, a prop. If you love fights like this and this type of choreography as much as I do, get some knots under your belt and watch those faces light up. When filming this type of fight though, you'll wanna make sure to capture it in a way that isn't muddled. I recommend this video of mine about framing and editing for clarity in fight scenes. And for instructions on how to tie the knots I used in this video, you should check out my Patreon.